Hey guys, it's Tori from Monogram Moments, and I'm going to show you all how to make this adorable frame with watercolor PNG design and a canvas. So, before we get started, I'm going to walk you through the materials that we need. A ruler, just to make sure things stay straight. A canvas, I got this one from the Dollar Tree, actually. Some wipes, also from the Dollar Tree. Any color paint that you want to stain. The canvas wood with a pencil whatever you want to use for the back of the canvas in order to make it hang up on the wall if you want to hang it up you might not even want to scissors needle nose pliers um, maybe even a flathead screwdriver if you'll need that and some masking tape and a hot glue gun a heat press and then a printer your inkjet printer and um, Jet Pro SS paper since we're going to do it on white. All right, let's get started. Okay, so before we go to the silhouette, we need to measure. Um, this is an 8x10, but our design needs to be smaller than an 8x10 because in, that technically means that from this edge to this edge is 8 inches, and from this edge to this edge is 10 inches. Well, we don't get to use our picture that large. Our picture is only going to go from the inside to here, so that's about seven. So we want it width-wise to be a little bit less than seven. Length-wise, we want it to be a little bit less than nine. So remember that for whatever size canvas you're using, you've got to measure the inside. All right, let's go to the computer. Alright guys, I'm going to go ahead and show you the computer portion of this project. So you will open up Silhouette Studio or any other photo editing software you might use. I do have the business edition of Silhouette Studio, but you do not need it. You can download the free version on SilhouetteAmerica.com and that will work perfectly fine. So I've opened it up. I'm going to pull in the design that I want. This is one of mine from my website monogrammoments.com and then I've already copy and pasted the verse that I want to use so I'm just gonna drop that in there and I'm gonna rearrange this I want this on a new line okay I want that to be center Okay, so now I'm going to change the color of this, and to do that, I'm going to take this eyedropper, and I can match any of these colors. However, I want to match this color here. Okay, and it changed the inside of it, so now I want to change the line color, and you'll see Silhouette automatically saves that color. So I'm going to click that, and now we're good to go. And I'm going to change the font to KG2 is better than 1, which you can get off of defont.com. Alright, now I want to space out my characters just a tad. And there we go. So now we need to measure the inside of our canvas like I showed you if you haven't already. So I've got 8.54 inches long by 6.92 inches wide, and I know that's going to fit inside of the canvas. And you'll notice that it is flipped. Since we're using Jet Pro SS, always make sure whenever you're using text, or if you are particular about which way your design that doesn't have text faces, always make sure to highlight it all and select flip horizontally. It will not be this way when we press it. Okay, now I want to make sure that I've got some extra space around the outside of the Jet Pro SS because I don't want to cut it and you'd be able to see where it ends on the canvas. So I want it to end on the part that's going to be behind the wood part of the canvas. So that's why I have this extra room. Now I'm ready to print. So I'm going to go to File, Print, 
if you have a PC, this part is going to look different, but you'll have all the same options somewhere. Make sure your presets are set to fine printing. I'm going to go here to quality and media. And I'm going to change this print quality to high. And I'm going to press print. Okay, so now we've walked through the silhouette portion. We've got this printed out. You'll notice that it is backwards, which is correct. We are going to start removing the canvas from the wood. So like I said, this is the kind I have. I got it from the Dollar Tree. You can really use any kind of canvas you want. Michael's, Hobby Lobby, Joann's, whatever kind. This is an eight by 10. So I've already started removing some of the staples, so you don't have to watch me do it all. But we'll do a few together. So you've got to kind of push down into the wood so you can get up underneath that staple. And this is what you could be using um, the flathead screwdriver for, but this works for me. And just pull it out. And it does not matter that we're pushing into the wood on this side because we're gonna, the other side is what we're gonna make the front. So this, this part of the wood is going to be in the back. And also we're going to be cutting this extra around the actual canvas. We're cutting all this off so it doesn't matter either if it's pretty or not. This one I had trouble with because it's just kind of far down in there, so I just pulled it off. And same with this one. Okay, so now we've got our wood, and this is what's going to be the front. And now we've got our canvas. Just like so. Okay. So let's go ahead and paint this so while it dries, we'll press the design on there. So I am using my studio. This is probably 10 years old, but any acrylic craft paint you want, this is bittersweet chocolate. And I'm just going to put some on here. You can sand this a little bit if you want to. Totally up to you. Okay, and then this is where the wipes come in. The wipes make it look like it's got a stained effect instead of just painting it on there and it being completely solid. It kind of makes it a little bit see-through. Again, this is total preference, so if you did want to just paint it with a paintbrush to make it not look stained, that is totally up to you. And depending on the amount of layers that you want, you can make it lighter or darker, whatever you'd like. Okay, so now that we're done painting this, we're gonna set it aside to let it dry and we're gonna move on to the next part. Before you start touching the canvas and your printed paper, make sure all the paint is off of your hands. All right, here's our canvas, here's our image. We want to cut around this, all this extra white stuff. However, as I mentioned in silhouette, we're gonna leave all of this because hopefully it's gonna end up underneath the frame so that we don't see where the Jet Pro SS ends because it's gonna leave kind of a shimmery, I'll show you. It leaves a shimmery kind of um, edge. It's really hard to see. So this is just me being very particular. Um, but yeah, just an option. But that's how I'm gonna show you guys. So I, you can make the best artwork out there. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to Turn on my heat press 
Um, you can use an iron for this, just since it's not going to be worn. It doesn't need to be as durable since it's not going on a shirt. Uh, if you are using a heat press, you need to set it on your cotton setting. I'm sorry, if you're using an iron, set it on your cotton setting. If you're using a heat press, we're going to set it on 380 degrees. All right, so our heat press is up to 380 degrees. So we're gonna go ahead and start the pressing process. First, we're gonna take our canvas. And we're just gonna press it to get out any moisture that might be inside of it. Just five seconds. Okay, so this is good. So now we're going to take our design and we're going to put it face down. And we're try to get it as centered as you can using that square, that first square that's already there from where it was wrapped around. So I'm going to press that here. So I'm going to put my Teflon sheet on top. And I'm, gonna, I'm using heavy pressure. Um, how you know you're using heavy pressure if it takes an extra little push to get that to go down. And we're gonna let it go for 30 seconds. done so I'm going to take this off and we are going to let it cool down before we peel off the Jet Pro SS. So, okay this is nice and cooled off for me so now I'm going to pick a corner go ahead and peel that off and your paper might rip and that's okay I just started another corner when that does happen Okay, so I'm filling this off. It was, the paper was ripping a good bit. Um, so I just used my fingernail to try to get that removed, just like that. And there we go. So we're going to press this one more time. And this time we're gonna layer parchment paper on top of the design so the ink does not come off Teflon sheet and then the Teflon sheet on top of it and then we're going to press again for about 15 seconds okay so now we've got this I haven't peeled off my parchment paper yet because I like for it to cool before I do it does give leave a different texture on the Jet Pro SS, if you peel it off cold versus hot, totally a preference thing. But if you leave it till it's cool, it's a little softer. You will notice that you can kind of see, it looks like little scratches. That is just where the cotton, how the cotton's made for the canvas. I really like that texture that it adds. It makes it, or it adds a more rustic look to it, which is what I'm going for. Okay, so now we're going to use our frame to get this centered and where we want it. You can take a pen or a pencil and you're going to trace the outline of the wood canvas. And now we're going to cut around this. Don't cut exactly on the pencil line because then it is going to hang over the wood. We want to cut inside of the pencil line, just right along inside it. And you can just keep it loose. It doesn't have to be perfect because this is what is being glued. This part will be glued on the back. So now I want you to take your masking tape or any kind of tape you have on hand and rip off 
a little bit of it. And we're going to mark our place of where we want our design. Since we're going to be gluing it towards the back, it's kind of hard to see um, where our design is to make sure it's center. So what we're going to do, just put a piece of tape along the side. Flip everything back over. Get lined up where you want it again. Making sure everything is straight, even. There's equal amount of white space on every side. And when you've got it where you want it, you're going to fold up this tape. So that is going to hold it in place while we glue it. Okay. Okay. Now I've got my hot glue gun plugged in. You can use a staple gun for this. Um, but I'm trying to make this for the absolute crafter who might not have those type of tools. So a hot glue gun will work perfectly. So when you flip it over, make sure there's no part where the canvas is hanging over the wood edge. And if there is, you might need to cut it off a little bit. So that's hanging over a little extra. So I'm going to cut that off just a tad. And that looks good to me now. So with our hot glue gun, I like to start in the corners. We'll start with this corner. Just do a little dab. And press. Make sure that that hot glue does not fold onto the other side of the wood or else it'll be seen. Okay. Now this next corner from here on out, you've got to make sure to pull so tightly. We don't want the canvas to be loose and, you know, have wrinkles in it. So I'm going to pull and then press it. Okay, so I got all my edges, now I'm going to go back and do my centers. Alright, and then flip it over. Make sure you don't have any space where you see the canvas kind of drooping or where there's extra sunlight coming in. And if you do, just glue that. We've got one more step. Unless you are just going to be staining this somewhere on a piece of furniture, you don't need to do this last step. But you might want to hang it on the wall or gift it to somebody who wants to hang it on the wall. So I have these two super easy options. They're both from Walmart. This one, sawtooth hangers that you push in. So let me just show you. This is all that it is. You would stick this on the wood and either push it in or hammer it in. So there's your sawtooth and if you use this you would have to put a little nail in the wall to hang it up on. But I like these. They're super simple. You don't feel like you're super committed to hanging stuff on the wall. Peel it off, put one on the wall, other one off, put it on the back of this and you just velcro them together and it stays on the wall. Super simple. And I do want to point out that you can't see where my Jet Pro SS ends and where the canvas begins since we left that extra room. It's happening under here where that wood is. And I really love this. So there you go.